Hey everybody, I'm Chris Harvey from Anson's Chocolatier, and today we're gonna make my favorite thing to make, chocolate ganache. I love to make ganache and I love to eat ganache and mostly I love to share ganache. One of the great things about chocolate is trying to transform it into things that taste even better than chocolate does in its raw state. And we're gonna achieve that today as I take you through the steps to make perfect ganache bonbons every time. I've dedicated my entire life to using conventional ingredients to make these ganaches. So today I'm really excited to be here with you to show you how to make them with vegan ingredients and they're just as delicious and just as satisfying. I've been making this recipe so long that I really wanted to challenge myself. So finding an incredible vegan product was important to me. This has checked off all the boxes as far as flavor, taste, texture. It's just incredible. So a ganache is traditionally made with dairy cream, really great chocolate, inverted sugar, and butter. We're gonna make two different ganaches. And in place of cream, we're gonna use raspberry puree. And then the other ganache we're gonna make, we're gonna use cashew milk. So what's important about making a ganache is emulsifying the water into the fat. So in this case, we're gonna be using raspberry puree, which is essentially water, and we're gonna be emulsifying it into the milk chocolate. When we do the other ganache, it's gonna be incorporating a caramel and cooking the water out of the caramel and then incorporating it with the milk chocolate and then finally adding the vegan butter to it. So I'm really excited to work with Miyoko's vegan butter and there is no sacrifice of flavor, texture. So I, I can say confidently as I've tested this product out that I can make incredible vegan caramel ganaches and nobody could really tell the difference to be quite honest with you. So I know working with chocolate can be intimidating, but don't worry about it. I'm gonna teach you all my secrets, all my tips, all my tricks. We're gonna make a flawless chocolate ganache Let's go ahead and cook. The first recipe we're gonna to make today is a raspberry caramel ganache. And I love this recipe because I've had so many raspberry ganaches around the world and they taste nothing like raspberry. But this one tastes exactly like I'm gonna advertise it as. Sweet and fruity and full of raspberry. So I've already measured the raspberry puree with the sugar and the glucose syrup. I'll be using vegan milk chocolate and of course, Miyoko's vegan cultured butter. There are two different ganache formulations. There are those that you can make and then frame and then eventually cut and coat. And there are those that you cook on the stove top that are gonna be used primarily for piping into shells. So that is the type of ganache that we're making today. So for this ganache, it's very easy. We're gonna place the raspberry puree, the sugar and the glucose syrup in the pot. And then we're gonna cook it on high heat until it's 104 degrees Celsius. So you wanna use the temperature probe and this is a quick cook to 104 degrees Celsius, so make sure that you stir it all the way up. And cooking it to 104 degrees is gonna cook out that excess water. It's gonna invert the sugar, and therefore it'll be preserved and be shelf stable for many, many months. When I say shelf stable, I mean keeping it at 18 to 22 degrees Celsius for several months in a dark room uh, is perfectly fine. It's 102 right now, so it's gonna take a little bit of a stall at 103 on its way to 104. And make sure you always stir and go in one direction. And this will ensure that the bottom stays clean, you're not burning anything, and it'll maintain that beautiful red color. It's very, very important. And you'll see it thicken up um, here momentarily, and it'll look more like a caramel syrup by the time we're done. Okay, so we're holding steady at 104, and that's it. So the next thing we wanna do is take it off the burner, and we're gonna get it out of this pan so we can drop the temperature. So at this point, we wanna Add the milk chocolate to it. Make sure that you use a glass pitcher like I'm using here, or a glass bowl. And this way, you can see that all the chocolate is emulsified into it. Okay, so we'll let that sit just for one second, and then we're gonna blend it with an immersion blender. So it's important that you scrape the sides down, make sure you get to the bottom, and then you're gonna emulsify it one more time, just to make sure that all the raspberry puree is blended properly with milk chocolate. Give it a visual inspection, make sure it's all in properly. So it's a very quick recipe to make. The thing we have to do now is cool it down before we add the butter to it. So you can either leave it at room temperature and let it cool on its own, or you can place it into a bowl and put it into a cooler and let it cool down over a period of about 20 or 30 minutes. Ideally, you wanna be between 35 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius before you blend in the butter.
So I'm gonna work some of it in by hand, and then I'm gonna finish it with the immersion blender. Take your time, be patient. We wanna pipe this at 32 degrees Celsius. Don't wanna go any little warmer, it could affect the shells and then your batch will be ruined. So look at that beautiful texture of that ganache. You see how beautifully elastic it is? It has that cascading V to it. It's really incredible. That we're at 32 degrees, so we can go ahead and pipe. We'll leave about one millimeter of space from the top, which eventually becomes the bottom. And you can see the beautiful texture of this ganache. So at this point, we're gonna let them sit at room temperature for about 24 hours, and that'll allow the chocolate to crystallize. You don't wanna put them in the fridge. The fridge has humidity in it. Humidity gets in the ganache, it gets on the outside of the plaque, and that affects the shelf stability and the food safety of the ganache bonbon. So the next recipe I'm gonna show you is a milk chocolate caramel ganache. It doesn't have a, a lot of milk chocolate in it, but it's still a ganache. But what it does have is an amazing texture and it's amazingly versatile as well. The ingredients for today that we're gonna be using are glucose syrup, sugar, cashew milk, and I've already infused some vanilla bean into it, milk chocolate, vegan milk chocolate, and of course the Miyoko's cultured vegan butter. I've already pre-measured the glucose into the pot. And the reason I do that is that it's important to get every ingredient in the recipe. And glucose is kind of a sticky ingredient, so we always kind of measure it into the pot itself. This way, every drop of the glucose, which is really important to the elasticity and the preservation of the ganache, gets in the recipe. So to start off my ganache, I'm gonna warm the glucose and the vanilla infused cashew milk just to take the chill off it. And the reason we're doing that is that when we go to arrest the caramel, we don't wanna seize the hot caramel with, with cold dairy. So we're gonna warm this up together. You just kinda of wanna take the chill off it and see some steam coming off it. So now that the cashew milk and glucose is slightly warmed, I can just take it off the heat, set it aside, and start caramelizing the sugar. We're gonna let this get hot. If you're doing this on a gas burner at home, just start it off on kind of medium heat until you get used to it, so you feel a little bit more confident about caramelizing the sugar. You don't wanna use um, a rubber spatula that might melt in the bottom of the pan. Make sure you also have uh, a really good uh, thermometer at your disposal too. Digital is best, you don't wanna use any of the infrared. That doesn't really work for sugar temperatures. So make sure you're using a, a probe thermometer. So the pan is getting hot, so I'm gonna add a little bit of sugar to it to kind of test to see how hot it is, just a little bit, and see how fast it melts. And I can see that it's kind of dancing around in there. And once it starts to melt, you can add a little bit more sugar and then let that melt, and then a little bit more, and then gradually more and more and more. And it's totally okay to stir the sugar too. There's a myth out there that you can't stir sugar, but you absolutely can stir sugar as it caramelizes. So I'm making a dry caramel. In other words, I'm not adding water to the pot and to the sugar. That is akin to uh, taking soaking wet newspaper and trying to start a campfire. It has, serves no purpose to have water in your sugar when you're caramelizing it. And then once all the sugar's in, I'm gonna cook it to a temperature of 193 degrees Celsius. And that is always my stopping point for sugar. The reason it is, is because it's right at that perfect temperature to ensure the texture that I'm looking for. And of course, sugar is a simple carbohydrate. It's a form of energy. It cooks very, very fast. That's why it's important to work with a good thermometer, have all your tools ready, have all your ingredients nearby, and just kind of never take your eyes off it because it can overcook very, very quickly. So you can see the color of the caramel is still very light, even though there's smoke coming off it. 190, 191. Okay, so now we can arrest it. And always use a long spatula and look out for that initial steam that's gonna come up when you arrest it with the cashew milk. You see how volatile that is? That's why it's important to you know, really protect your hands and your forearms and make sure you don't get splashed back with that. This is very, very important. You see how watery this is? We want to make sure that this excess water is cooked out of it and ensure that it's shelf stable and it's gonna give us that elasticity that's so desirable in confections and chocolates. Make sure you do a lot of stirring, go in one direction. It's important to maintain one direction counterclockwise or clockwise, it doesn't really matter as long as you're just going in one direction. 
The reason I bring that up is that these things are so volatile, they're jumping out of the pot. That kind of helps you keeping it in the pot. Make sure we get all that sugar sitting at the bottom. So we reached 104. So at this point, we can take it off the heat. We're gonna strain it out to remove the extra fibers from the vanilla bean. And then we're gonna blend it with the vegan milk chocolate. So we strain the caramel out. That smells amazing. So again, important to strain it because you're gonna see that the heavier fibers from the vanilla bean are in the strainer, but the vanilla seeds are in the caramel. Okay, so now we can add the vegan milk chocolate to it, and then we're gonna blend it with an immersion blender. So it's important to blend thoroughly because again, you have just a little bit of milk chocolate, that's all fat. This caramel, even though it's caramelized and it has cashew milk to it, it's still all water to the chocolate. They don't like each other. We kind of have to force them together. After we blend the milk chocolate with the caramel, it's important to cool it down between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius. When it reaches that temperature, we can add the butter in. If the ganache base is any warmer than 40 degrees Celsius, we run the risk of actually ruining the ganache because we could cause the water and the fat and the vegan butter to split and it's gonna affect the mouthfeel and your ganache will be ruined. We're gonna let it cool down for probably 20 to 25 minutes, depending on the temperature of your room. Then we can incorporate the butter and then we're ready to pipe. So in goes the vegan butter, and now we blend it in. So now that the ganache is done, we have to check the temperature to make sure it's okay for piping. Again, we're looking for 31, 32 degrees Celsius, and that's the ideal temperature for piping. And we are right there at 32, so we can go ahead and pipe. So the ganache looks liquidy right now, but as it sits overnight, it's gonna go through a process of crystallization. And what that means is all the fat cells are gonna to start to thicken, and then your ganache will be set. And once the ganache is set, we can put chocolate over the back of it, seal it up, and then 30 minutes in the refrigerator, they're ready to come out. So there we have it. These are our exquisite creations. We have our raspberry caramel bonbon, our vanilla caramel bonbon. Feel free to try them at home. Let us know how they turn out. Leave a comment in the comment section. Thank you for joining me on the Vegan Butter Academy. I am so grateful to have been able to share my knowledge with you and share my passion. I obviously can't leave without tasting one of these exquisite creations, so here it goes. Mmm, that's amazing. The caramel, the vanilla, the milk chocolate, and made even better by using that beautiful culture of vegan butter.